Welcome to the CX Green Room, everyone, where the big hitters in customer experience talk trends and share success strategies. Today, we are going to talk about using journey optimization as your secret weapon to making it super easy for customers to do business with you across their channel of choice. I'm Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director at Genesis. Joining me is co-host Clara Beatty, Senior Director of Customer Advocacy at Genesis. And of course, our special guest for today, Bill Stamp, Director of Contact Center Customer Growth at M&T Bank. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Bill. Really excited to have you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at M&T Bank. Yeah, hey, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're dialing in from. It's a good afternoon here for me. Uh, but, but as is it Bill Stamp, I'm uh, the Director of Contact Center Customer Growth here at M&T Bank, their contact center. Um, I oversee a, a team of, of bankers that actually do make outbound and take incoming calls uh, from customers looking to grow their, their bank or learn about our products and services uh, with us. Um, and we also have an outfit where we do a lot of uh, outbound calls uh, for campaigns, whether it be for marketing uh, and, and other uh, different kind of outreach efforts like that. So I've uh, been here for uh, about 19 years uh, in, in, in this role for about uh, eight months now. So it seems uh, too new, <laughs> more than it should be. <laughs> Well, very cool. And, you know, of course, since you are an industry big hitter and you're in the green room, that means that you need to have that special green room item, whether it be, you know, a basket of kittens like Marie, Mariah Carey or special color M&Ms. So what is your green room item? Yeah, no kittens. Uh, we have a lot of snow, so I don't need any of that. But one thing that I love to do uh, when we're, we're not necessarily uh, at work is play golf and i've been uh so uh lucky to um share in some of the success uh prizes of of some tees and some golf balls uh, they have a nice uh kind of um, place in my heart for them not only is it more frustrating game to play uh but it's something that my whole family can enjoy at the same time well, that's fantastic and did you notice that the the balls and the tees are in genesis colors love it green <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> blue and orange it's yes. green and yellow like right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah we have to be on theme and you know so i have some white ones handy which you know with the snow are definitely not i may have to i may have to borrow some of the orange golf balls that you have so i can actually see what's happening it's easier um, that's for sure <laughs> well I, I don't know if you'll want to think about genesis the next time you play golf but you hopefully will <laughs> absolutely you well, know i will <laughs> So, um, Bill, you have a really interesting role. I love this, you know, the title of being part of customer growth. And you said it's a newer role. So tell us a little bit about the backstory of how you got to this role and, you know, where you came from within the bank. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, so as I mentioned, I've been with M&T for, for 19 years. I started out actually at the contact center um, as a banker on the phones. I didn't know what I wanted to do in, my, in a career. And I said, well, hey, you know, I'm going to school um full-time uh, for college and i needed to get a job uh, and it was a professional job at the time so i i took calls from customers and learned the bank through the lens of how we experienced the, that channel uh it was an awesome experience uh had moved around different different roles here and uh, spent about 15 years actually in the front lines so yeah uh so i i, I knew uh when i when i started off at the contact center i i could do a lot more and and i really was interested in in growing my career and, and that brought me to the branches uh, where I spent about 10 years actually helping customers face to face and didn't realize this was a job where you could uh, really help customers with their solutions, uh, you know, with with uh, with our solutions of the problems that they had. So um, that led me on to a couple of different uh, paths here, which was more more management positions in, in the branch world where I oversaw 14 branches. Um, so there I was was charged to um, to really shape the experiences and coaching for our bankers. Uh, to, to be best positioned to help our, our customers as, as, as well as we could. When I realized that I had 15 years of experience in the front lines, I knew I could do more. And that more led me to uh, a role actually at the bank, um, which was uh, the customer journey owner for our servicing journey. Um, so, so let's talk about CX and, and it's kind of ground, uh, um, you know, kind of gr uh, grassroots here at the bank. Uh, the, the bank was organized around journeys a couple of years ago and kind of brought on by the pandemic. Uh, we knew that we needed to serve our customers better um, and in a way in which we we, we subscribed to do that uh, was through customer journey work and uh, i spent about two and a half years uh, leading some work there with some really awesome outcomes 
Um, and then I knew in that two and a half years uh, kind of hiatus, I, I really missed the direct conversation, the direct communication and the direct impact with customers. Uh, and that brought me to this role. Um, so, so my leader here uh, that I work with uh, closely uh, was creating a new role and identifying that we have an opportunity to really grow our business through the contact center and through this channel. Uh, and I signed up for it and I've been uh, delighted I have been able to do so in the last number of months. So, Yeah, you've had some some really sort of like pioneering type of jobs in, in the bank by the sound of it. Yeah, it's it's fun to be as part of the, the front runner, so to speak. But yeah. Um, so we've had various conversations with your colleagues at M&T Bank as well and know that you're on a big transformation around customer experience and around journeys in particular. What are some of the challenges that are driving that transformation? Well, I think it starts with getting everybody on board first, right? Uh, we, we all have to subscribe and and not just use the words that we believe are the right things to say. Um, but, you know, we think a lot about being customer centric here. Um, it's very easy to say, yeah, we care about the customer. Of course, we all care about the customer. Uh, but it's something different than when you actually put the customer at the center of your table, when you're talking about solutions, experiences, or whatever. Uh, we know that we all need to do that. And that's a little bit of a shift for us. Um, I think, you know, in banking, we can uh, oftentimes be, be thought of as being very siloed uh, in our businesses. And that's a very easy thing and a very comfortable thing to fall into. Uh, but what's good for me and my contact center business may not be what's good for the branch or for the digital partners. Um, customers often, you know, shop first digitally and they may call us second. Uh, if I build experiences specifically for the contact center, I might be missing out on those, all those opportunities where we start, you know, the process first in, in the, uh, the, you know, the digital or online channels. So I'd say it starts with getting everybody kind of aligned around the, the, the core um, um, focus of, of being customer led. Um, and, and frankly, loving the customer, truly understanding what they want, uh, as opposed to what maybe generate better outcomes or, or, or revenue for the business lines. Um, that may not always be the best equation to kind of build on, but uh, truly understanding what the customers want and demand uh, and where we fall short or where we exceed those expectations as well. Mm. And can you, can you give us an example um, of a customer journey that you've improved or worked on and what some of the benefits have been to your customers? Yeah, one that I, I think of was a lot of fun. Um, I'd say this was the the, the definition of, of maybe CX 30 plus years ago, uh, but all states in the United States have to uh, abide by abandoned funds, right? So it's the achievement process when customers um, stop using their accounts. Um, at MNC, uh, we had a pretty archaic process. And by that, what I mean is, is 30 years ago, we decided to say, hey, if a customer's account becomes abandoned, or we'll call it dormant in this case, um, we would actually remove the account from their online banking. We would stop sending statements uh, as a means of alerting the customer that there's probably a problem that needs to be uncovered. So if you stop receiving your savings account statement, you might say, hmm, what's going on here? I'm going to call the bank. Uh, we would then say, oh, well, great. Gl gl glad to see you're still alive and you're with us. Uh, you need to come into the branch to sign this piece of paper. Um, and, and that was the only way in which customers could rectify this dormant account. So we we lifted up the hood pretty pretty high uh, on on this this uh, this journey and mapped out all the different experiences in which customers would would kind of go through um, and understood that that we needed to really change this process. Uh, we were impacting hundreds of thousands of customers every year uh, in this kind of this whole uh, the feedback from customers was was egregious and we knew that we had some opportunities uh, some really low hanging fruit opportunities to kind of deploy. <clears throat> so. Um, we set out on a path to to kind of change that, and you know we we kind of reverse some of the things that would be more, um, I'd say more uh, you know fundamental to our way of, of working today. Uh, and actually, instead of removing the account and online banking, we actually created a self service button for the customer to click uh, to reactivate their account, keeping them in the channel that they chose, which in this case was online banking. Uh, mm -hmm. We also started off a calling campaign in the contact center where customers would actually be proactively reached out to. Uh, as a means to acknowledge that their account needs some attention and and provide some solutions in which that could be rectified. Uh, and that also led us to some other really great outcomes of, of uh, you know, uh, driving more customer growth, uh, you know, alerting customers of, of, of their balances that have gone kind of uh, a little bit missing uh, to, to drive better returns for them, uh, as well as lower the cost to serve for our customers as well. Uh, you know, it's 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 astounding, but we would send out paper, we would send, uh, you know, a, a bunch of associates to do this this hard manual labor work, uh, which was rectified pretty pretty quickly with some of the work that we we uh, we embarked on. Mm. Sounds like a big improvement in customer experience.
It was. Yes. It was awesome. And and not to mention, you know, we were also uh, looking to convert uh, another bank at the time, People's United Bank, uh, just a few years ago. And, you know, through through the story that we could tell, uh, we, we identified an opportunity that customers going through the conversion experience would also be heavily impacted, uh, which also had kind of inspired the, the, the growth opportunities for us to build on some of these enhancements. Mm -hmm. Sounds like uh, self-service is actually a really important part of improving that customer experience. Can you talk a little bit about your strategy around self-service and, you know, any benefits that you, that you're seeing so far? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 um, amazing to think about how customers interact with banks or even just any company today. I, I think customers tend to start digitally, uh, and find those opportunities to do it themselves. If they find they have to go to a branch or they have to call us or do something different, uh, that's where frustration could, could, could largely be, be you know, be met. Um, our our model over time has been very branch centric, so we send a lot of customers to the branch, but as a growing bank, um, that is not a sustainable option or opportunity by, by no means. Um, so we've looked at a number of different opportunities to, to, to kind of shift in, and um, keep our customers safe and our bankers safe at the same time, but also look at many self-service opportunities. Um, things like retrieving your user ID from the IVR in, in one instance. Uh, we, we, you know, we tend to think that's a very high risk transaction, but through authentication and ways of which we can kind of validate the customer's identity, uh, we've, we've worked on some really awesome, uh, you know, in, improvements there. Um, of course, self-serve, we know, is a, is a huge um, uh, cost savings opportunity as well putting the, the features in the, the hands of our customers to do, um, not only is, is the expectation, but also uh, it's a huge uh, opportunity to, to make sure that uh, we can uh, reserve our bankers and our, our, our associates uh, for the higher complex types of, of servicing issues. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you say about authentication. It's just such a huge opportunity to remove time from the customer journey and to get your staff focused on, you know, getting to the heart of the matter rather than going through procedure. It's probably also more secure eventually. <laughs> Indeed. Um, okay, so, sorry, Ginger, you were going to follow up on that one. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, all the, the stories that you're telling, clearly that you've learned so much going through all of these various journeys yourself and all these changes. Tell us a little bit about what you've learned so far that you're, that you've, something you've learned that you've applied or something that you've learned that you're planning to apply as you take the next step in your evolution. Mm, I, I love that question. And, and as I spoke about my experience, you know, we, I feel like I, 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 I've, I've seen a lot of it, um, but I often could fall in the trap of feeling like I know I have all the answers without actually doing the work of involving the customers, right? So um, I think the first thing that, that we need to uh, really be mindful of is, is truly understand the problem in which we're trying to solve. Um, it's easy to be solution-led, um, but we can't truly be solution-led if, if we don't even understand what we're trying to solve, right? So um, th that that is is the, the most crux and basic thing that we do. We often go back to clearly identifying the problem, um, coming back to it often and times again to make sure that the, the work that we're doing, in fact, uh, aligns to, to that work. Um, the, the second thing I'd mention too is being really customer-led. Um, again, I mentioned it earlier in our, our talk today, uh, but having you know, the, the, the wherewithal to understand truly what the customer's uh, experience is. And it's it's not all customers, but it's the majority of customers, right? We, we can't, you know, ask everyone, but we can do enough survey and enough data uh, collection to understand truly what customers want and what they expect. Uh, and that could be an ethnographic research, that could be an actual customer surveys, talking to our bankers, uh, many different ways in, in which we would be able to collect some of that, that data. Um, the, the, the other thing I'd mentioned too is, is one thing that I, I've been um, uh, challenged with in the last number of months, but you know, I, I, I think a lot about an agile mindset. What could we be doing to do the smallest amount of work possible to get some insights, some information, uh, some reaction uh, before we go build this mountainous program or this mountainous thing? Um, let's work smarter and certainly not harder um, and do the least work possible to, to get some insights. I uh, love what you said about becoming, you know, ever more customer centric. Um, I w someone said a quote to me the other day, which is, well, you're never done with becoming customer centric. It's, you know, it's an ongoing, you know, you've never reached, reached it. Um, and there's a nice comment in the comments 
um, understanding what the customers want and demand versus assuming what they want. It seems obvious, but, and it's, you know, it, it isn't, is it? It's a, it's a listening, really listening well and understanding is actually very difficult. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I love that comment um, and that reflection because it's truly, truly that. Um, I, I could hear all the things that I really want to hear, um, but but truly um, understanding and even, you know, just watching a customer as they navigate a web page or even use an IVR, for example, it's totally different than what you might read on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, so when we talked in preparation for this uh, for this conversation, you mentioned that there was also a shift in the data strategy at M and T Bank. Um, would you would you share with us, you know, some more of the journey that you're going on on there? Yeah, um, there's so data runs our world uh, clearly, um, and you know, I feel like uh, over time we've. Um, we've looked at some things around customer sentiment, um, truly understanding, and you know the ways in which customers perceive us. Um, we've looked at a lot of things, and we're starting to embark on you know more surveys to be able to get some more real life data um, as 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 well. Um, we, we, you know, when I think about some of the work as it pertains specifically to the contact center, um, you know, we we've got endless amounts of data, troves and troves and troves of data. Um, through the work with Genesis, it's been awesome to be able to see my team get adopted to to that uh, um, to this platform uh, and see the opportunities that we have at our fingertips now. I mean, building dashboards, building um, information so I can see, you know, what point of time do customers actually call us more, you know, frequently about this type of issue. Um, we've been able to split out certain queues as well um, to to be able to kind of dis, uh, uh, discern between um, customers calling us versus bankers transferring their customers to us for you know growth potential opportunities. Um, it's it's been really really cool to to kind of um, um, see that more more vividly um, and be able to take that data and those learnings and actually apply it to to real real life solutions. Um, you know, I think data tells a story uh, and the journey that, that we're on, and that only could be, uh, you know, supplied um, through through all the hard work that that we are, are certainly embarking on every day. Mm. And it must be incredible having that new level of visibility and may, maybe also overwhelming. Where do you start with all of these insights that you're uncovering? Yeah, it starts with some some really awesome people on my team. <laughs> first and foremost, um, I think uh, you know we've been able to kind of uh, you know we could tell the story through through many different dashboards and so many different ways. And I think you're absolutely right. It's where do you start? Um, I, I think we've you know we have a balanced scorecard in 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 the contact center. We we look at things through uh, our ability to help our customers, and that's through referrals and you know setting appointments and also driving the growth and making sure we've got um, um, revenue being produced that's greater than the cost of the team. As two small examples, um, mm -hmm. you know when we look at those those things, this could only be answered through the data that we can collect and actually kind of tell the story on. Uh, and where we might need to go next to to kind of um, uh, you know retool some of the work that we are doing. So having that north star, I would argue, um, gets us to to maybe not to be so over overwhelmed, uh, but but have enough data in which we can uh, drive the outcomes that we're looking to to drive forward. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so there's a lot on your plate already, but what's next? What do you have planned? Well, uh, aside from the technological issues I experienced today, uh, sorry for that. It's getting that short up on, on my end. Uh, but but no, more 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 seriously here. Um, when I think back to the context center, you know, we we've got a lot of really 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 great opportunities in front of us. Um, the team I stepped into, um, I, I'd argue, is probably one of the most exciting ones in the bank. Um, not just because I'm here, but it's also around you know the ability to to drive growth. And, and more more seriously though, you know, we've got four big bets at the contact center. And when I think about the big bet number four, um, uh, is capitalize on expressions of interest. And this idea of expressions of interest is, is really about the partnership that we're building with our marketing friends, our digital friends, our CX friends, uh, and being that that center in which customers, um, you know, are, are certainly, uh, you know, able to, to interact with us, you know, if and when things may not go as planned. So, as I mentioned before, you know, customers may start their journey online, they may start an application with us, and something may happen. Uh, we don't have chat in that application instance today. I'd love to see that get get stood up. Um, we also are are you know trying to follow up on those leads. So if a customer did in fact abandon an application, uh, they may go to another browser or they may go to the bank in a different channel, or they may be frustrated and just leave us completely. 
um, you know, we've got opportunities which we could follow up with those customers uh, in, in a more quick quick manner as well. So we can kind of re-engage that customer and truly understand why they abandoned it and what we can do to help them. Um, we also could maybe be uh, more ready to help them in screen sharing moments of, of as well. So customers struggling through a part of our website or a process, uh, you know, how might we um, um, be able to kind of uh, put our best bankers forward to be able to help kind of, you know, that, uh, you know, troubleshoot or diagnose that that issue uh, for our customers. Uh, those are a few things that I would argue that we, we you know, we, we we're looking at um, and we're really excited about uh, learning more about. Uh, and the last thing I would mention here in this space, too, is uh, banker assist or agent assist and maybe Genesis terms. But, you know, how do we leverage AI insights and information, uh, you know, real time uh, to be able to arm our bankers with a more consistent and better experience? Um, maybe things like, you know, geez, looking for a policy or procedure, things could pop up to give the, the banker the right information at, at the time that they need. Um, or even suggesting prompts or scripting that we know is very successful for our customers and maybe trans translating some of that uh, conversation to growth. Um, what are some of those things in which we could be more autonomous uh, and, and, and drive you know, more of those opportunities to, to build a more consistent, better experience? Fantastic. So we have one quick question that, Bill, you cover the topic, but let me just throw it out there and see if there's anything else that you've got. So Omar's asking, the biggest pain point in the contact center is identity and verification. Any strategy to, to overcome this? And, and again, you talked about it a, a little bit before, but anything else that you can recommend? Yeah, um, this is one that we struggle with a lot. And uh, today, um, my journey of other things that are coming up next, I'd argue, is enhancing our capabilities. And what I keep hearing from my fraud friends and, and other, other areas around the bank are just those two things, identity and verification. Um, we, we've looked at a number of different solutions in which we're trying to strategize and get more comfortable on. Um, and and that that is is probably the biggest hurdle as, as we see it today. It's it's a whole bank effort, not a channel effort. It's a it's a whole strategy at the bank level. Um, so I'd say, you know, we're we're trying to partner where we can uh, with other areas that are trying new solutions. Uh, as a means to say, let's use this as a use case and, you know, using the data to say, if we can do X, we can create Y. Um, and that growth story, that that growth opportunity um, has helped in some cases. Um, it's, it's one that we've not conquered or solved, uh, but one that we're, we're certainly really, really close to, to, um, to hopefully getting some good news on. And I feel like that goes along with what Claire was saying earlier, that it's customer experience is an ongoing journey, right? And especially in an environment like yours, where there's a lot of regulation, you have to work so much as a team. And it's so great to hear how much collaboration happens across your organization. Mm -hmm. So I think one, we've squeezed in one final question from Steve, um, Steve how do you handle those who still want in-person versus self-service? I mean, it sounds like you still do a ton of in-person. We do a ton of in-person, absolutely. Brick and mortar is, is our model. Um, and it's where a lot of customers prefer to do their business as well. Um, I think what's what's also a really great and awesome about the bank is that we we don't dictate or curate experiences for customers in a particular channel. Uh, we try to be you know ever reaching to to those customers so that they they choose how they want to bank with us. Um, you know the the days and times in which we fear you know the ATMs will kind of destroy the branches over time. Like no, it, it's we we know that to to be a, a fallacy and and that's not going to change uh, how, how we show up for our customers. Um, you know, we, we look for all channels in which we can uh, certainly uh, create an experience that's catered to them with however they choose to bank with us. So the phone, of course, um, as I mentioned before, we're, we're doing a gap analysis to understand what capabilities do we have and don't have to help our customers. Um, and, and similar to, to the likes of that in the digital space, uh, we want to be able to, to help customers wherever they, they, they choose to bank with us. Fantastic. Uh, Bill, it's so exciting to hear what you're doing at MNC Bank. Thank you for sharing your journey with us, literally and figuratively, pun in there, because I can't resist. Um, and, you know, again, thanks for being here. Thanks for all of you who joined us. If you enjoyed the show, please like, share, tell folks to come and listen to the recording. And we will see you next time on the CX Green Room. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, everyone.